Welcome back and thanks for your interest. This is the second in a series of videos outlining the steps to making my new engine, the Phoenix engine. The focus of this segment is making the displacer. Now that we have a finished displacer cylinder, we can plan out the size of the displacer from it. We need to consider how much travel vertically it should have. Since my engines are mainly conversation pieces, I want the movement to be easily seen, but not so much that it causes problems later when we are making the crankshaft. In addition, we must allow enough room for air to freely travel around the displacer, or it will slow the engine. In this case, I will make it about 12 millimeters shorter than the cylinder, with the diameter about 6 millimeters smaller. Also, it should be lightweight, a good insulator, and be able to hold up to heat inside the engine. For almost all the engines I have made, paper is what I've used for the displacer. Here's the finished plan based on these considerations. There are two versions here showing my original plan and one my daughter made the design for. It is easy to work with a heavier paper, but with patience you can get it done with almost any paper. Some papers stand up better to heat than others. Cut out and assemble paper with basic white glue. Take this cut out. Take this around. It will be glued. Like such. All right. Once we have the side glued, we're going to start folding all over all the tabs on the bottom. All right. Once that's done, see it's tabbed in the bottom because it's going to be easier to. Do the top before the bottom's attached. We'll go ahead and do that right away too. Now that we have both creases on both sides, we're going to size up the bottom piece, which I cut inside the line versus outside the line on the top piece to make it a hair smaller because it's going to go inside. So I want to just put it in here, make sure it lines up before we glue anything. So it's going to fit nicely. So that's, that's the way we're going to do the bottom. So, go ahead, put a dab of glue on each tab. Let me get it set in there. Once you get it set, put on your wax paper, which I'll get in a moment, and kind of just let it set up a little bit before continuing. Put it in the paper, make sure the tabs are set good, and a little weight on top of it, a piece of scrap wood for something I was working on. Okay, once that's set a few minutes, we'll move on to the next step. We're going to glue this ring from the bottom up. The um, reason for that is it can be very difficult to um, put the clip top on. In this case, because I'm using a heavier weight paper, it wouldn't be that bad, but um, regular printer or copier paper, you pretty much need to do the ring part. Get inside. Recently you get glue on your fingers a bit. You want to try not to touch the sides. Alright, once that's dried and set up a bit, we're going to put the top on. Just hurt nothing. Obviously you want to keep that centered. As best as possible. Alright, once that's dry. This turns out pretty good. I use a pin to poke a hole in the center here. Alright, we need to make the displacer shaft. For that we're going to use some music wire, let's 
0.032 inches in diameter. So let's uh, get that to measured out here and cut off. Cut off my rotary tool. Keep an eye on it when, uh, when you lose it like that. It's going to be the length about that we're going to use. I kind of messed up a little bit there, but it should be fine. Now we need to grind the ends. I'm going to polish it a little bit. Use a drill press. slide more easily up and down, I'm going to sand and polish it. For that I'll use the drill press again. This time I'm going to put the wire right in it. I have some I think, 2000 grit sandpaper. There's some a cloth with some rosin on it. And we'll put that on there. And then, then I'll use one of my buffing tips for my rotary tool and just kind of clean that off. Because everything is square here, I can be assured that the hole will come out in the right spot on the bottom. comes out so that it uh, is square, not tilted on the shaft. Put a small bend one of the ends. We'll take the one that's a little messed up anyway. And then we feed it through. The hole we just made. Let's get it through. Typically then I will put a little JV weld or high temp epoxy on there. A little dab on the other side. We will have a finished displacer. A little something I decided to add to the process to shield the bottom a little bit of the displacer. It gets a bit hot. This place is made of paper, obviously, so there's some risk of um, a bit burning a little bit. In fact, the first time you run these engines, the uh, this placer does smoke a bit. Um, both my beer bottle and copper top engines have paper displacers. Both have been working for over a year now, pretty much without fail. But um, they have browned a bit on the bottom. So we're going to put a heat shield on, which I actually did on the uh, beer bottle engine, but I used um, aluminum tape, which in the end uh, fell off. So we're going to just Smear around some high temp silicone. So again, this is rated, I believe, for 750 degrees. I'm just kind of get it all spread out. And then we're going to put some aluminum foil on there, shiny side down. So I'm just 
Put that on there real good. And actually, I'm going to put lines out from the middle here. Just kind of set it into the silicone real good. Maybe this will help the um, airflow to the sides of this place or two by giving radiated grooves. Then once that's all set, I'm to just take a I'll let that set on there. Then I'll trim that off with the scissors when it's all set. Once again, thank you for watching and stay tuned for step three, making the top and bottom.